two, one. So when you run into the force of gravity, and in particular, once you kind of uh, study Newton's second law, and you recall that the net external force is equal to mass times uh, acceleration. Once you are familiar with this, then it's very easy for you to actually obtain what the force of gravity is uh, based on this. So if you keep in mind, uh, force of gravity indeed, sometimes you know people say that it's just the weight, so I use it interchangeably. You know, so sometimes I'll write it as force of gravity, which might be just F, you know, G, okay? Or sometimes I'll just stick and just write W. So both of these kind of mean the same thing, okay? At least in uh, when I'm teaching this concept. So if you have an object, and it doesn't matter what object it is, right? And you kind of suspend it up in the air, um, you have learned the fact that there is a pull, okay? Well, a pull is an actual force, Okay, that the Earth itself has, and um, that pool itself is causing this object. We could uh, do this by experimentation, an object to accelerate at 9.8 you know, meters per second squared, so or at least approximately at that um, acceleration or at that rate. And this, you know, we referred to as the acceleration, and we gave it a nice little symbol, and it was just G. So very often we would do that. Well, if you know this for objects that are falling, and this is, you know, assuming that we're kind of in a vacuum, meaning there's really no air resistance, then you can very easily take now this formula and substitute because you know exactly what the acceleration is. So, you know, you know what this acceleration is. Well, it's just 9.8 meters per second squared, um, approximately, or just simply G. And therefore, you know, when you are working things out, you will notice that whenever you are dealing with the force of gravity or you want to be able to find out what the actual weight is, well, it's nothing else but just simply the mass of the object, which is going to be measured in kilograms, and then gravity, uh, which is acceleration due to gravity, and that particular item is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you substitute all of that, this is going to give you in the unit of Newtons and the direction is going to be down towards the Earth's surface. So it is indeed a vector. Now, this weight, uh, one thing that I would want you to keep in mind, this 9.8 meters per second squared, when we're doing our experiments, our physics experiments, and we kind of uh, check this, this of course is near the Earth's surface. So it's not everywhere in the universe. In fact, um, you know, you will learn as you go along the actual gravity, the pull between two objects. Okay, there is a, a special equation for that. And that will depend on the actual masses of the two objects. Um, so that particular pull, okay, or this gravity that you're studying is near its, um, the actual surface of the Earth. If you were on the moon, well, it's going to be different. So it's no longer, so I mean, there's still a gravity, there's still a pull, but the actual moon is, I think, about a, a sixth, okay, the size of um, the actual Earth. And it will turn out that that gravity, you know, you will actually feel lighter, okay, um, because it's going to be one sixth of the gravity that we have here. And sometimes you might hear the word weightless, right? So if you're reading something or checking something out, like, what does that mean? Well, weightless just means that this pull isn't strong enough, like it's negligible. And, you know, if you're going to be taking off on, on a rocket, you know, eventually you escape um, the, the, the Earth's uh, gravitational pull. So that means you're far enough from it um, that basically it's kind of negligible. So as you get further and further away from the Earth's surface, okay, this actual G, you know, gets smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually just kind of becomes negligible in a sense. Um, and that particular pull now all of, all of a sudden leaves you weightless so you're kind of floating around and that's why you see astronauts floating around in the you know rocket ships when they're up uh, in the space okay or in the space station so that is pretty much it now if you wanted to you know calculate this well it's not very difficult you know if someone gives you let's say an example and as soon as they give you what the mass might be so let's say you know mass would be you know i'm approximately i think 77 kilograms so if I want to know, okay, what 77 kilograms is in terms of the uh, gravitational force that we have, so I'll just put W, okay, within here. So my weight would have been nothing else but 77 times 9.8.
And from this, you know, so you can calculate, I can take out a calculator, plug it back in, and very quickly get what the force is. Now, this is, so this particular force is in Newtons. And so here, I'm going to just round it. So I'll round it to 750 Newtons because I had, I guess, two sig figs, okay, for 77. Now, if you wanted to convert, so for example, from Newtons back to pounds, and you have that conversion ratio, so I kind of recall one Newton is equal to 0 0.22, you know, I think it's 4.8, okay, so pounds approximately, so give or take. So if you do have that, you can certainly use the unit conversions and convert this back in, okay, to your pounds, and that would have been, you know, so if you're taking it, well, you know, if I put 750, okay, and then this would have been, the conversion is rather simple for us to, to be able to do, especially if we know what that conversion ratio is. So this is what you would have in here. The Newtons would cancel off, okay, and then you would get your approximate answer for um, pounds, and you can round accordingly. So that is it pretty much for the force of gravity or for weight, and it can be nicely captured from Newton's second law, right? So for right from there, just by substituting kind of what the acceleration due to gravity is. So that's it, okay? So thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.